Hi, welcome back to part three. We're going to look at angle of elevation and depression in this in this video. But before we do, let's remind ourselves if we're looking for a side, we want to cross multiply. And when we're looking for an angle, we're going to inverse. So keep that in mind, side, cross multiply, angle, inverse. We haven't had an angle problem yet. I think that might be our next one. Okay, and then I have my calculator already open, and I believe I already have it set to degrees, but it doesn't hurt to hit mode and just check. Yes, it's in degrees. If it wasn't, we could just arrow over to it and hit the enter key before we hit second and quit to make sure we're in the correct mode. Okay, at the end of the last video, we talked about the angle of depression looking downwards from a horizontal line, and we talked about the angle of elevation looking upward from a horizontal line. And then we talked about how if you look at hor from horizontals, those would be parallel. So my angle of elevation and angle of depression are alternate interior angles and are therefore equal to each other when you're comparing them with parallel lines. Okay, all right. So now let's look at this first example. A person on the zip line travels a horizontal distance of 109 meters on a 120 meter zip line. Okay, so let's talk about what that's going to look like. Okay, so when you, if you've ever gone zip lining, I haven't, but I've seen people do it and it looks so much fun. But you go, you start up high, right? So you're up here and you travel down to lower, and gravity is just what pulls you along, right? And so you're hanging, you're harnessed in, and you're like, wee, right? And so you're, you're hanging on and you're zip lining down to a bottom portion. Okay, you normally have to, um, unless you just start at a place that has a higher elevation, you have to climb up somehow or somehow end up at the top. And then you're going to travel this distance along this diagonal. Okay, now it does say my person on the zip line travels a horizontal distance. So this isn't how the horizontal distance, right? Because that's diagonal. It's not horizontal. My horizontal distance is going to be this one down here. Okay, so that's where my 109 meters goes. It's the horizontal distance. Okay, and we are on a 120 meter zip line. So the zip line itself, the cord or whatever it is that we travel on, that is 120 meters. Okay, it says, what is the angle of depression of the zip line? And remember, depression means from a horizontal looking downward. Okay, so that means if I'm standing up here at the top before I'm here and I'm looking straight out, what is this depression? Well, remember your angle of depression and your angle of elevation are the same. So really, I'm just trying to find out how many degrees is this angle because that'll be the same as this angle of depression. Okay, so if I'm looking for an angle... I know on this one, I'm going to be using the inverse. So this is the first time today we've done inverse. All right, so let's label our triangle because that's the first thing we want to start with. The angle I'm trying to find is this acute angle right here. So that's where I'm going to put my smiley face. Okay, and then out of that smiley face, I know I'm going to have a hypotenuse on one side and I'm going to have an adjacent on the other. The hypotenuse is easy to find because the right angle points at it. And then the adjacent is the other side. And my smiley face reaches for the remote on the opposite side of the room. Okay, so that's the opposite. All right, so Katoa. We still use that even do it though we're doing inverse. So we know which inverse we want to do. Toa. Okay, so now let's see. I know my adjacent is 109. I know my hypotenuse is 120. So the trig function that uses both of those is going to be cosine. And remember, we want to use the inverse. So I'm going to be doing the inverse cosine. That's the one with the little negative 1. And then in our parentheses, we put the fraction. We start with the fraction this time. So A over H. My A is the 109 over the H is 120. And that is going to give me that angle that I'm looking for. Okay, so my angle that I'm looking for oops, 
is the inverse cosine of 109 divided by 120. And I already checked, I'm in degrees, and I want the inverse cosine, but look, I clicked it, I didn't get the inverse. So I'm gonna clear, second cosine, so that I have that little negative one, it opens up my parentheses, because it knows I'm looking for this number here, 109 divided by 120. I'm gonna put that seatbelt on just to be safe, and when I do that, I'm gonna get this 24.72, and then after the three is a nine, so I'm gonna say four, and these are, it's an angle, so they're degrees, right? And I know we can leave it like this, it doesn't specifically say, but yesterday we were, in the when we did our inverses, we were rounding to the nearest degree, so this is approximately, I'm gonna say approximately, so the little squiggle equals means approximately equal to 25 degrees. So not too steep, right? You wouldn't want a zip line at too steep of a degree because then you would be going too fast and it'd be real hard to stop when you cut down here at the bottom. Okay, let's look at the next one. Number two, from the top of a 575 foot bluff, the angle of depression is seven degrees, find, draw a sketch and find out how far the accident is from the rescue team at the base of the bluff. So a bluff is just like a cliff, okay? So it's just gonna be like up here, I've got a cliff, and then I'm down here, and that bluff is 575 feet tall, from the top of it to the bottom. And remember, height is always measured in 90, so I know that's where my 90 degree angle is going to be. Okay. My rescue scout is looking down on a hot air balloon accident. So over here, I've got my hot air balloon accident. So my hot air balloon fell in the ground, sadly. And let's, let's hope everybody's okay, but there's the balloon. It's deflated now. Okay. All right. Let's hope it just kind of gently fell to an accident. <laughs> All right, so my rescue scout is up here at the top. I'm, I'm really bad at drawing people, but, so I just do stick figures. And he's looking down at this accident, okay? If he were to be looking straight out, his angle of depression to look down would be seven degrees. Remember that angle of depression is the same as this angle of elevation, seven degrees degrees. My picture is not to scale that's much bigger than seven, but that's okay. It's seven degrees. We draw, draw a sketch, which we've been doing as I've been going through. Find out how far the accident is from the rescue team at the base of the bluff. So down here, I've got this rescue team at the base of the bluff. Okay, it's a little ambulance. There's my rescue team. How far does the rescue team need to go to get over here to the accident, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can't figure this out. I'm looking for a side on this one. So I know that means it's not the inverse. I know I'm going to be cross multiplying. We know this angle in this right triangle is seven degrees, so that's where I'm gonna put my smiley face. It seems a little weird to draw a smiley face at a hot air balloon accident. I should have probably put a frowny face, okay? And then I know coming out of that angle are my adjacent side and my hypotenuse. Coming from the right angle is the hypotenuse. And then the other side is the adjacent. And the two sides that come out of the smiley face are reaching for the remote on the opposite side. We're gonna compare this to so, ka, toa, so we know which trig function to set up and turn into a proportion to cross multiply, okay? All right, so the side that I know, the opposite side is 575 degrees. The side I want to know, the adjacent side is X. So the trig function I'm going to use is tangent. The tangent of the angle, seven degrees, is equal to O over A. My O opposite is 575. My A adjacent is X. Okay, then we're going to put the left side over 1 so that we can cross multiply because we're looking for a side so we know we're going to 
cross multiply. Okay, when I cross multiply, I'm going to end up with x times the tangent of 7 equals 575 times 1. And if this was already x equals, if my x had been in the top, if I want to know how tall this bluff was for some reason instead of how far, I mean, we really want to know that one. But if my x was on top, I'd end up being equal right now, but it's not. So we're going to divide out because I have x times the tangent of 7. So I'm going to divide out the tangent of 7. Remember, you have to divide by that whole tangent of 7. You can't divide by just 7. When I do that, on the left-hand side, my tangent's canceled out, and I just have the x. On the right-hand side, I have this fraction that I can put in the calculator. 575 divided by the tangent of 7. I'm going to put my seatbelt on because I like to be safe. I don't need the rescue team having to come find me, right? I'm going to tell that rescue team that they need to go 4,682.999, and then there's a 1, so it's just going to be 0.999. Okay. So that's how far the rescue team needs to go. Oh, and I should tell the the rescue team, they're not going in miles, they're going in feet, which if they're in a truck, that's going to be difficult. But it's a little less than one mile because 5280 is a mile. So if the rescue team goes a whole mile, they've gone too far. Okay. All right. So there you go. Finding using your angle of depression and identifying that that's the same as the angle of elevation. Same here. We were looking for this angle of depression. But if we found the angle of elevation, that's the same. So that angle of depression and the angle of elevation. Okay. We're going to do one more video, and it's going to be back to a regular polygon, which, remember, means all my sides are the same length. And then my apothem is that distance from the center to the side. So we're going to talk about finding that angle when we find that right angle so that we can figure out on this one what is the perimeter of this pentagon. So they gave me the apothem this time. I'm going to work backwards to find the side. All right, I'll see you in the next video so we can practice it with another regular polygon problem. Thanks for watching.